हेलो डॉक्टर्स वी ऑल नो दी एफिशियंसी ऑफ अ डॉक्टर और अ मेडिकल स्टूडेंट मेनली लाइज हाउ इन हाउ मच ही इज वेरी कीन इन ऑब्जर्विंग द पेशेंट इन द वेब साइट सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस वन सच इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक वॉट टंग सेज टू अ डॉक्टर वेरी सीक्रेटली सो दिस इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट पार्ट इन दी फिजिकल एग्जामिनेशन सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड वी ऑलवेज लिसन टू द प्रॉब ओनली वाट अवर माइंड नोज आर आईज विल सी so before getting in detail with the topic i'll give you a simple hint what we are going to see in a tongue of the patient so first thing mobility which may include protrusion or deviation then volume of the tongue then color then texture and in texture we have to examine the moistness furring then any cracks or fissures any swelling any ulcers and also we have to examine the papillae so there is no need to remember any of this in order we will go uh, in an intuitive way so that if we are going in front of a patient these things will automatically come to your mind what are all the things you have to do in a systematic way so let's see you just imagine that a patient is standing in front of you what you will do if you want to examine the tongue first you will ask the patient you just show your tongue so during that process patient will try to protrude the tongue so if there is any problem in protrusion we will come to know there is some issue so what are all the things we can ex expect if there is inability to protrude first one is ankyloglossia or tongue tie which most commonly we can see in case of children child age group and then in case of old age we can think about any advanced carcinoma of tongue involving the floor of mouth this we can think so and uh, if we are asking the patient to open their mouth if there is any problem in opening mouth then we have to go and rule out these oral uh, mucosal fibrosis and any other systemic causes like scleroderma and all those things that uh, mainly focuses on the examination of mouth but here we are talking regarding only the tongue so first step patient is going to protrude the tongue and we are finding difficulty so these things could be the reason for it okay so now patient had find uh, Had protruded the tongue easily. So now we are finding deviation of tongue to one side. So what it is indicating? If there is any deviation to particular side, so it is indicating the involvement of hypoglossal nerve because of some other disease condition. Because uh, hypoglossal nerve is the main supply for tongue. So whenever there is involvement of hypoglossal nerve, that will lead to the deviation of the tongue. Okay. So it is very clear. First you had gone to the patient. You had asked the patient to protrude the tongue. and you had uh, checked for the deviations also if there is no deviation then there is no worry you have to go for the second thing so this is how the deviation looks like so now protrusion of the tongue also happen and there is no deviation so we have to check whether the size of the tongue is okay or not so that was uh, that will be the next thing which will come inside our mind so we have to check the size that is volume of the tongue so if it is large or macroglossia what are all the conditions we can expect so we can expect acromegaly then cretinism then myxedema then comes lymphangioma then comes cavernous hemangioma all these conditions we can exclude or include in the diagnosis based upon the systematic symptoms available because in case of acromegaly you will find symptoms which are related to growth hormone issues in case of cretinism or myxedema you will find some other symptoms which were exactly related to thyroid disorders and in case of lymphangioma on examination you will find that brilliant transluminancy and in case of cavernous hemangioma by examination you can see any uh, blue color tinge or red color tinge based upon the involvement of uh, artery or venous inside the cavernous so based upon these things we can arrive at the diagnosis but this only won't help we have to check for the other symptoms also as i had mentioned now so now at last it is amyloidosis where we can see large tongue this is how the large tongue looks like so while protruding itself we can easily identify so now we had seen protrusion now uh, patient had protruded and uh, we had checked the volume also so okay now we had checked the volume then what we will do next let's see now we will check the color of the tongue yes it will like directly our eyes will go to that only how the tongue is looking like so if it is very pale it seems that the patient is suffering from severe anemia we also know in case of anemia we used to examine tongue and palate so pale tongue is indicating severe anemia if there is discoloration like a few patient used to come to us with yellow color discoloration and we used to think uh, whether there is any probability of jaundice and we used to check the eyes of the patient also but the patient will say that uh, recently i had some toffee or i had ate something uh, yellow in color so this happened so this we can most commonly see in case of ingestion of food color so before going to conclusion or before thinking about any disease condition make it clear whether the patient had ate something in very recently so that could help us to exclude then 
if the patient is having blue color it is clearly indicating some arterio venous thing is involving if it is blue so we are uh, here it is mentioned venous hemangioma so in case of veins we will get blue tinge and if there is black hairy tongue what we have to think so with this we can see in case of heavy, heavy smokers in case of heavy smokers uh, just because of that the people will be having hyperkeratosis of mucous membrane and because of aspergillus niger fungus also we will get this black hairy tongue okay this is how the tongue looks like so now we had asked the patient to protrude the tongue and we had checked for the deviation and we had checked for the size that is volume and we had checked for the color also. Now what we have to do? So now we have to check for the moistness that is texture of the tongue. So with the help of moistness we, had ident we, we can identify whether the patient is hydrated or not. So if it is dry then we have to think about dehydration only. Then if the tongue is dry, brown in, dry and brown then we have to think that the patient is suffering from some later stages of severe illness or we have to think about acute intestinal obstruction or we can think about any advanced uremic cases will be having this dry brown tongue. So these things you have to remember. Next we are going to examine furring on the dorsum of tongue which comes under the texture of tongue. So in case of heavy smokers we can see this furring. And brown fur and black hair tongue, already we know, we can see this type of a black hairy tongue in case of aspergillus fungus. So, this firing is most commonly seen in heavy smokers and aspergillus fungus infection. And also in case of local infection of mouth, nose, throat and lungs. So, still now we had seen about the uh, protrusion, then deviation, then uh, regarding the size, that is volume, then regarding the color and now we had uh, discussed uh, regarding those furring, moistness, everything. So now we are going to examine the papillae. So we all know there are three different types of papillae. In the image you can see one is circumvalid papillae, another one is fungiform papillae and another one is filiform papillae. So these circumvalid papillae, they are very large and they will be around 8 to 12 in number. And they are located in front of the sulcus terminalis. You can see in the image where the sulcus terminalis is located. So this sulcus terminalis is very specific because it used to differentiate the tongue uh, into anterior two-third and posterior one-third. Okay. Then comes fungiform papillae. These papillae usually exist in the sides of the tongue and near the tip of the tongue. And this filiform papillae, they are very small and most numerous and they don't have any taste. But these are the specific things regarding these papillae. So, let's see if there is any problem with the papillae, then what it is indicating, okay? So, first in case of examination, if there is generalized atrophy of papillae or smooth tongue, what are all the conditions we have to think? The conditions were vitamin B12 deficiency, iron deficiency anemia and certain gastrointestinal Disorders. So, in case of this malnutrition, malnutrition issue, we have to think about replacing the nutrition and if uh, the nutrition replacement is mainly because of any assimilation issue, then our medicine will help in a great extent to rectify the problem. So, this is how smooth tongue looks like. Then, regarding what is chronic superficial glossitis or leukoplakia. So, with the name itself, we can say leukoplakia, it is white, something white in color. So, here in this condition, we can see whitish opaque areas of thickened epithelium with no normal papillae, okay. So, uh, leukoplakia is one of the uh, pre-malignant condition. So, if the leukoplakia is persisting for a longer duration, it have the chances of growing into malignancy and uh, this leukoplakia we can see in chronic smokers also. Then, in case of examination of papillae, one of the most interesting tongue, it is geographical tongue. It is purely benign and uh, it is existing nearly in 1 to 3 percentage of the world population and uh, it won't be appearing along with some other diseases also. So, it is a painless patches of tongue appear and then reappear from atrophy and there is no uh, associated conditions in a marked way. Sometimes it is physiological only. So, this pattern of tongue we can see. So, this is called geographical tongue. Then, this tongue is also very interesting median rhomboid glossitis. Here we can see diamond shape. This lozenge, lozenge shape is nothing but diamond shaped area of loss of papillae, mainly in the midline, anterior to the foramen cecum. Foramen cecum in, is present in the um, uh, border between the anterior and posterior part of the tongue. And you can see this uh, uh, diamond shaped uh, area where there is loss of papillae, which is exactly belonging to the midline. So this is called median rhomboid glossitis. So 
Now we are going to see some of the special signs which we should know while examining the tongue. The first thing is excess of salivation. So they are saying if there is any patient standing in front of your OPD covering their mouth with a handkerchief to prevent the salivation coming out. This means that the patient might be suffering from carcinoma tongue because this excess salivation is one of the very common and very specific symptom for this condition. Then comes a difficulty in speech. Here difficulty in speech they are mainly talking regarding the dysarthria which is articulation problem in articulation. So whenever there is problem in articulation then we have to think regarding cleft lip and cleft palate and also carcinoma tongue. So cleft lip and cleft palate it is congenital and we can see in children and carcinoma tongue we can see in elderly age group. So before uh, diagnosing whether it is dysarthria or dysphagia we have to be very clear. Then comes alteration of voice. Alteration of voice we can um, see in uh, laryngeal carcinomas also and if there is any uh, mild problem with the larynx but along with that in case of tongue uh, the condition carcinoma of posterior one third of the tongue also should be considered in case of alteration of voice. So it is just a recap because uh, there is no need to memorize as I had already told. It is just an intuition if we are asking the patient to open the mouth and show the tongue they surely they will protrude at, the, that, at that time we can find the mobility of the tongue and then we have we can check the size of the tongue then we can check the color of the tongue oh, that those things are very normal and we will check the texture of the tongue where we will find the moistness and furring and uh, if there is any cracks or fissures and if there is any swelling or if there is any ulceration along with that we are we are going to examine finally the papilla also. So these are all the things uh, we have to do in case of examination of tongue and these are all the secretive things a doctor will be knowing just by looking at the patient's tongue. So that's all from our side and uh, developing the clinical eye in a medical student is one of the most important thing which we have to do and happy learning.